tablets and ancient texts. I'm an expert on aerospace history. I'm an expert on some uh, different technologies and quantum physics and quantum mechanics. I'm now a producer, a documentary producer, a movie writer, and I've written a lot of shows for TV as a background writer. That people don't even know I've written those shows and written those scripts and so forth. Hello and welcome to another day in paradise and welcome to another edition of the unapologetic negropian in today's video so a couple of days ago i made a video about billy carson i spoke to you about the email that he had sent to youtube trying to shut my channel down however in that email they inadvertently sent me billy carson's telephone number so i tried to give him a call on camera to no avail however a little later on that night I managed to get a hold the of The phone conversation was extremely interesting. And what I want to do for you today is I want to analyze that telephone conversation. I took a look at it and I saw that there were 10 things that I extracted out of that telephone conversation that you guys also can use when speaking to scammers over the phone. So we're going to get into these 10 important things. First, I'm going to ask you, like always, to please like, subscribe, share, click the bell notification, and please consider supporting the channel on our Patreon. Patreon, link in the description. I'd also like to invite you to please follow the Oversight Channel, the channel that is there to help you to invest on the African continent, both safely and securely. Link also in the description. So let's get into it. Rule number one, the length of time he spent on the phone with me. He spent almost an hour on the phone with me. An hour. Who in their daily lives right now has an hour to spend on the phone to anybody. It's difficult for the average man to find an hour in his day to speak to somebody on the phone, yet alone a multi-millionaire, multi-business owner like Billy Carson. Clearly, he was spending time on the phone for me for reasons we're gonna get into a little later on in this video. Number two, deflection. So Billy Carson started speaking about other people that he used to work with and about the bad things that they did. I started speaking about Chris Gibson, a former business partner, and how he managed to get away with some of the crimes that he committed because of his status down there in Florida. A police report against Jacquez Tullis, who was the person that actually, uh, him and three other people, not only stole the information, but as well as uh, Rob stole, stole from our company. Because he's saying that you stole from the company. That of course he would say that, of course. And Chris, the Chris Gibson uh, screenshot of that guy making those comments, that guy stole, robbed the bank. He started bringing up people, he started saying names, trying to divert my attention. He didn't want that attention. And whilst he was on the phone with a YouTuber who can make videos about people who are into crime, then why not throw somebody else under the bus? Number three, the empty threat. Guys, if I've told you once, I'll tell you again. Please don't take threats over the internet and over the phone seriously. Most of the times when people are trying to threaten you over the phone or over the internet, it's a dangerous thing for them to do. There must be a reason for it. The vast majority of the times, those people are making those threats in order to change the way you think or the way you feel. They are not trying to make those threats because they have any serious thoughts of actually taking out the thing that they are threatening to do to you. Number four, their money and their power. See, I have, un I have unlimited funds, unlimited. And I didn't make my money from the conscious community. I've been rich long before the conscious community ever even existed. I was rich before the internet came into uh, into existence. Wow, wow. I just been stacking and building. Essentially, it's a way for them to try and influence you to think or to do something. So scam artists will always try to project themselves as being an extremely wealthy person. Why do they do this? Because they want your money. So if they are trying to get money from you, hey. I can give my money to this person. This person's wealthy, he's rich, he's a multi-millionaire. He's not going to take my money. So a lot of those scam artists will use this ploy in order to take your money off you. This one is actually quite simple and you should know it already. Number five, the sympathy card. And that's why black people are the most locked up people in the world. Stuff starts to, it wasn't really that big of a deal to me until it started affecting my family. Mm -hmm. And when things start to affect my kids, that's when I take it. That's when I got to take it personal because if somebody comes at me sideways and starts affecting my family over something that's actually not accurate, well, then I got to take action. I can't sit down and let my family suffer over uh, over uh, false information. 
information and fake news. Well, I do. That's why when I start to see black people attacking me, it's like, damn, what the hell, man? I'm out here helping as many people as I can. The majority of the people I'm helping are black people. This guy threw out all the stops for this one. You know, these things, they could all be true. But why are you telling me for? This is no offense to Billy Carson, but really, there was no need to tell an average YouTuber about the history of your life and your rags to riches story. There was absolutely no need for it. Not from my point of view anyway. Definitely from his point of view. Because he doesn't want me to make these videos. He wants me to stop. But that is something you definitely need to keep an eye on. Number six, selling themselves. They really go in with the sales pitch. They are trying to sell themselves to you because they want to win you over. This is another way that they try to influence you. You know, this is what I studied neuroscience for. It's called applied neuroscience. You have to teach, you have to get people where they are. And then once you get them where they are, you can move them into where you want them to be. This is what the mainstream media does with negativity and divisiveness and divide and conquer. We have to overcome this stuff. They tried to say, oh, well, you know, you're a black person. I'm a black person. We are in this together. We should be holding each other up. It's as if they just can't help themselves. I mean, they just can't stop themselves from trying to sell themselves. It just comes out naturally. So keep on guard. Watch out for when they try to do that. I'm going to sue you. Well, unfortunately for him, he's facing a very big lawsuit uh, from me. So he'll be getting served very, very soon. Because this information cannot be proven in the court of law as positively accurate. It's actually inaccurate, which gives me very good information. Uh, and also, I get a chance to now uh, sue his homeowner's insurance policy. And mm -hmm. I'm going to start doing that to everybody that wants to play this kind of game. D does that include me too? Well, you're in the UK. I talked to the attorneys about it. They looked into the situation. And then, uh, if we can't rectify the situation with this guy in, in the UK... Then I'll take it to the UK courts. Wow, okay. Now they've taken your video and this other guy's video and they've put it in, into this court group. Oh. They've Graham groups with 30 and 40,000 people in there. You know, Telegram has a law, so we're the, con the attorneys working with them now. They have a law against that kind of stuff, so they're working to get that entire Telegram group uh, deactivated. Guys, I think every scam artist in the world has said those words at some point in their lives. I'm going to sue you. America has sued culture, but they don't have that in Europe. Never heard a European person say to me, well, you said this, so I'm going to sue you now. It just doesn't work the same way here in Europe. However, I understand that he has a whole team of lawyers and they are getting ready to go to England right now so they can serve me papers in England and they can really get to work with getting me to court and getting me sued in England. Shall I tell him or should you tell him? Number eight, I've done it before. I, had, I got four Instagram accounts completely deleted, completely deactivated. So he started to go through all the stories of the times in which he has done this type of thing before. I mean, for him, it is totally normal. And he wants to project that to me on the phone because he doesn't want to really go through the court system. He doesn't want me to go through the court system. He has no intention of going through any court system. What he wants me to do is take down those videos and be quiet and not make any more videos about him. Clearly, this is having the opposite effect. So he'll find a story that has some piety with your story and then he'll tell you about the multiple times that he has done this. Number nine, the belittling. You're saying that the whole video is incorrect then? Yeah, that, that whole video is garbage, it's trash. That, I, I, this is what can happen to you when you get on the internet and start looking at people's YouTube videos and start trying to become a, a low budget investigator. This is what can happen, you can lose everything. Oh. You can get a judgment against your house and you can never be able to sell your house. Almost every scam artist is either a sociopath or a narcissist. They are on the spectrum at some point. Some are worse than others. So you've got to remember they have multiple personalities and one of those personalities is trying to control the other personalities all the time. So he probably had a lot of anger. He probably was holding that in and every now and again it comes out but it comes out in a more subdued diluted manner so they don't want to throw you off they are still in control 
A lot of psychopaths do this very, very easily. And number 10, projecting the danger that I'm in because I'm talking about him. Did have an arrest, and yes, the case was actually terminated six months later. Never went to prison, never became an ex-convict. As a matter of fact, I had my concealed weapons license in the state of Florida and Ohio because I've never been convicted of any crimes in my entire life. So he starts talking about his weapons. Now, he didn't threaten me at any point. He, he just started talking about the fact that he has a handgun. And the fact that he has a handgun means that he has a license. He has a license because he doesn't have any criminal record. Because the number one thing you should do when you start off a conversation with anybody on the phone that you don't know is that you don't trust them you automatically have to tell yourself i don't trust this person i'm going to trust this person at the beginning of the conversation and at the end of the conversation it's like speaking to the police you never trust them you don't even speak to the police you always shut your mouth you use your god-given right and you keep your mouth shut because the vast majority of the time the police don't want to make their lives harder they want to make their lives easier and most of the times if they are trying to get that evidence it comes out of your mouth so keep your mouth shut so guys those were the 10 things that i found out in this telephone conversation it was a pretty funny conversation if i need to be honest with you i enjoyed it thoroughly a lot of these scammers don't understand that there are people out there that understand them there are people out there that know what they are doing and they don't understand that there are a lot of people out there that are not going to fall for their BS under any circumstances. Until the next time, please think twice, Torah Abu. I'm going to, I don't care if I win zero dollars, I'm going to make people go to court and spend their own money to uh, find out what the truth is. If people want to spend their own money, thousands of dollars to find out that they made a mistake, that's what's going to have to happen. And I'll spend two, three, four hundred thousand dollars doing this if I have to.